Let's talk to someone who knows far more about uh, the military than I do. Tim Davies, former RAF fighter pilot. Tim, welcome. Hey, Nick. Good to have you. Thank you very much for joining us. It caused a bit of a stir this today for all sorts of reasons. It wasn't so long ago, and I think it was in January 2021, uh, a leaked email sent by a recruitment officer, which are contracted to the military, as you will know, uh, appeared to deride white men seeking to join the RAF as useless white male pilots. And now we have this, a policy introduced in March 2023, apparently, that is saying, hey, back off the checks. It's more important we meet diversity and equality targets. How bonkers is this? Well, Nick, we've got to be honest. You know, we've been overtaken by whatever you want to call it, whether a fifth columnist, whether a little neo-Marxist, whatever it is that's integrated themselves within the military from a very early age. Like promotes like. As you well know, they've come up to a very senior level now. And of course, they feel that they can undermine the very service in which they serve. Now, I taught every single fighter pilot in the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force for a decade. And diversity was not an issue for us, Nick, because if people aren't good enough, they just die. It's pretty simple. And people don't understand this, Nick. The military is not b and It's not Tesco's. It doesn't matter whether you put the wrong thing on the shelf, but it does matter that you get the right person in the right place to fight the wars and protect the sovereign integrity of this great nation. I mean, uh, I'm sure you've seen the open letter against the army's inclusivity policy. There's so much in here. I just want to pick out, if I may, a couple of points. This was always my first thought, and I never expressed it well enough, but I think these uh, army chiefs have done it. They said the Russians, the Iranians and the Chinese will be observing our descent into self-hatred and obsessing over diversity and inclusion with glee. These intolerable policies are forcing the British armed forces into moral disarmament and it cannot stand. What did he mean by moral disarmament, do you think? Well, it's an interesting one. I've talked about this for four years now, and all of a sudden people find it interesting. The, the rot is entered and it is there to stay. It's firmly embedded within the military and the civil service and the cabinet office and the Ministry of Defence and the education, health, whatever you whatever you want to go. The truth is there are three people leaving the British military for every one person joining. It's unsustainable, Nick. It should be a criminal act that's been occurred. We should be treating it as such. We should be going and looking at the people at the senior service and any one of them that was promoting this deal DII agenda over the last, say, half decade, we should literally remove them. Say, you're not fit to be in that position. You're not fit to put anyone else in those roles. And you've got to get out because they've actively subverted our military and our civil service and the ministry and the cabinet office from within, Nick. And that's the problem because the core demographic within the United Kingdom is still, that joins the military, is still young white men and women. And unfortunately, what we're doing is we're turning them completely away because they know they won't get promoted. They won't get the opportunities that other people will get. They probably won't even get in it. That's the truth. They won't get in now. Tim, and so they're not joining and they're going and doing something else because they're very sensible young people, as far as I'm concerned. Tim, uh, the Defence Secretary, Grant Shapps, he said how cross he is and he's ordering an inquiry. I, I mean, that does seem remarkable that He's only just heard about this. Is it, is, it, is it credible that this has sort of gone unnoticed for several years? No, it's absolutely pre-planned, Nick. I mean, you speak to your chaps in the Conservative Party. I'm sure you've seen it as well. I wouldn't say they were Conservative, maybe only in name only. I honestly believe this is something that's happened intentionally. And when, when is the start date of this? Well, I don't know. But the reason we're talking about it now, of course, is because we are starting to air that notion of conscription and people are starting to realise that there's a lot of people in this country that have no interest whatsoever in protecting the security of this great nation in which we live. And so, of course, we're going to have to rely on the people that do have an interest in actually protecting where we are. And those people aren't joining the military at all. So, unfortunately, um, we, you know, we should listen to these senior officers. It's, um, it's been a long time coming, and uh, if we don't do something soon. And the problem with Grant Shapps, of course, I mean, he's, I'm not a huge fan, but Ben Wallace, of obviously the previous Defence Secretary, he was responsible for this. Let's not forget that he was the one driving diversity, equity and inclusion into the armed forces. That was him that was doing it. And I think the only reason Grant is looking to maybe unravel some of this a little bit is because he has to, because the pushback ahead of a general election by the British public is obviously going to be quite severe and rightly so. Well, that would presume, of course, that defence 
is up there on the electoral agenda. And, and I would like to see it, but in many years of being in politics in the past, I've not seen it. This might be, and I hope, is a turning point for that to happen. Let me ask you this, though. There'll be a lot of us thinking, who came up with this idea? Where in the structures of either government or army was it? Did, would it have probably started? I mean, you won't know exactly, but where would it have probably started? And, and, where, and where, where and how was it embraced to become this dogma of 2023? Is it civil service? Is it military? Oh, it's not military. Well, the, the, the military is always going to have weak people in it. Of course they are. And of course, the, the sometimes the issue being is that when you do what your boss wants you to do, your boss will promote you because like most like, and you're going to end up in a power position. And then someone's going to embrace this coming in from the civil service. It most, hap it most definitely happened outside the military first. And I remember I said to my wife, you watch when this hits the military. When this hits the Air Force and the Army and the Navy, it will bounce off and we're going to get a reset. And it didn't. If anything, it was accelerated inside. I, mean, I stand proud. You can't see the flag, unfortunately, over my left shoulder here. I stand proud of this flag, the flag of the Union. I work out every morning with both that flag and the English flag because I'm a proud Englishman, as we should be, Nick, and I'm sure you are too. But the truth is, to allow this to come into what is a core essential public sector service, such as the military, is nothing less than criminal. So I think it's come in from the Cabinet Office, it's been directed through the Ministry of Defence, and it's been absorbed in and then driven forward by significantly weak leadership in our military. And those leaders, they have no future, as far as I'm concerned, in our Defence Forces. Uh, I'm told by very good military contacts I have that actually our chiefs are appointed on their politics. And I don't mean who they vote for, but it is a political manoeuvre to rise up into the senior ranks of the armed forces. Is that really the case? Well, you, you can actually look at the last chief of the air staff, who I used to fly under one of these aircraft, the Tornado GL4 down here. He was my boss, guy called Mike Wigston. I liked the man a lot. He was a fantastic squadron boss. But as the chief of Her Majesty's Royal Air Force, His Majesty's Royal Air Force, unfortunately, his main agenda was to focus on this absolute nonsense that is DE and I, which has, if if not even, it's not even that it. It does anything for war fighting that is positive. It's the reverse. It undermines everything that everyone is training for in the British military. People leave. I get emails every single day. I get, I get emails from minorities that don't want to join the military, Nick, now, because they, they think, unfortunately, they're going to get promoted or they're going to be furthered because of their skin colour, not even because of their ability. And the problem is, Nick, as I'm sure you're aware, that if we accept diversity into any institution, then by definition, we have to sacrifice meritocracy. And the military is the ultimate meritocracy because if we do not allow it to be, then unfortunately, we just die. We lose wars. And that's the end. Tim, can I uh, just do something very rash? I have no, no idea how this is going to go, but I've just noticed we've got a caller who wants to talk about diversity in the military. Can you stay on the line? I have no idea what they're going to say. This could be <laughs> this could be quite awkward, but let's just no, bring sure. Vi Victoria into the conversation. Uh, sorry, Ver Veronica, you, you want to talk about diversity. And, yes. and I've got Tim on the line whilst you're here. Yeah, I can see. Um, hi, Nick. Yes, I want to know who are the idiots who want to downgrade the military. Obviously, they don't like this country. They want to see it destroyed. Instead of downgrading things, they should be putting up things, securities, like um, slightly different. Some years ago, a relative of mine worked as an auditor in the Ministry of Defence. I know exactly what he was auditing at the time and that. And the whole family had to go through security checks before he could have the job. And I just wonder, just what security checks now they're having in the military? So, so Tim, I think Veronica's saying, what are the implications of this? And, and who are the, who are the and Veronica's words, the idiots who are downgrading the security on this and downgrading our military? Well, Richard Dearlove, he, he said, didn't he, the head of MI6, he said, this is absolutely ridiculous. We can't allow this to happen. And he was the head of MI6 and he should know. So it comes out of the civil service, Nick. And I think, to be fair, if you look deep into the civil service, civil service, you will see a very leftist bent. You'll, you'll see a, a, a very pro-European, shall we say, uh, a civil service that, that seek in every step to undermine. Now, we know we've pretty much got a uni party within the UK. And we understand that and we kind of accept it. But we do expect the civil service to do the best thing 
for the United Kingdom, and I don't believe that's happening. So in answer to Veronica's question, and it's a fantastic question, and what a fantastic woman to, to call you in and to, to, to add to this conversation as well. The truth about it is that it's been driven from on high. I don't even believe the politicians are responsible for this. I believe it's the senior civil servants that are up there, and I also believe they think they're doing the right thing. That's what makes it so dangerous, is they believe that diversity is a good thing. And why wouldn't you think it? Because if you don't think that, they're going to call you all sorts of random names. And I know because I've been called to them before, especially on my YouTube channel. But the truth is, uh, it's coming from within. And that's why we need to root these people out, get rid of them and almost start again, to be fair. Uh, Tim, th thank you for, for that. But hold on there. Veronica, thank you very much for your call. Much appreciated. Uh, you've got a, a much better discussion going there with Tim than you would have done with me. Tim, one one thing, and I'm trying to f find a positive in all of this. And, and I do so because I came from a service family, my, my son is in the army. The recruitment crisis is actually pretty horrific and you talked about the, the difficulty of retaining. The army, for example, I think it's about 74,000. It's, it's only going to go down. What can we actually do and how much of getting rid of this priority on diversity and inclusion at the cost of security would make a difference? What, what else could we do to get people seeing and understanding what a great life experience it is. Well, I mean, it is. I did 20 years. I'll go back tomorrow, except I wouldn't, of course, not under these conditions. But of course, eventually they're going to ask us all to go back because they haven't got enough people to um, teach people how to do certain things. The truth is, it comes down to individual values and standards of the of the of the great British public. That's exactly what it is. Great British men and women. Don't get me wrong. I talk to them every single day, and I am one myself. I'm very proud of what this country is, does. And I'm not willing to turn my back on it. And people say, well, we can move overseas, go to Australia. Yeah, you want to do that, that's fine, but don't expect to come back because the people who built this country are the people living in this country and the people that want to continue to build the country are the people like your son, Nick, who are going to ignore all this nonsense, join the military, and then actually try and adjust it from the inside. I send people into the military to just do this. I say, look, these people that come through me, they send me emails, get into the military, make a fundamental difference, be the person other people can look up to. That's what I say. Your own personal values and standards are key here. Don't listen to these career politicians that want to make an absolute mockery of, 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 of the fact that people think differently because they've got a different skin colour. It's ludicrous, Nick. So we have got good, uh, good men and women that are still joining. And as long as we keep them going in to the military, then there is some hope. But we just need to really take a good look at the people. Well, we can we, we can find something hopeful at the end of that. Tim uh, Davies, former RAF officer, fighter pilot and trainer, more importantly. Thanks very much for his very uh, passionate insight into what's going wrong there. I mean, there's so much I, I could say, but what do you say? I think he's made the case brilliantly. <laughs>